It's part of every parent's dream to have their children educated by good teachers. But what does that mean? Part of Bristol University, the Centre for Market and Public Organisation, has been studying this. Do good teachers matter? And what, in any case, is meant by a good teacher? I've come to a place today where I should be able to find some of the answers to those questions. It's the Isambard Community School in Swindon. Hey, I'm Peter Scott, I'm a science teacher here at Isambard Community School. There was three of us that we were nominated as teachers in the school. Um, I was a new teacher because I'd only just started, so it was a total surprise. I went forward to a ceremony in Bath where I received my award for Outstanding New Teacher. If we, if we knew what made a good teacher, that would be a really, really important piece of information. I think that what our research shows and what research from the United States shows is that it's very hard to actually work out uh, to try and spot a good teacher before you've actually seen them working for a year or two. The problem is that the research so far suggests that the, the effectiveness of the teacher is not really very well correlated with the observable attributes of a teacher. So the teacher's experience doesn't seem to make much difference beyond the first year or two. So that's to say a teacher who's been teaching for three years on average is better than one who's been teaching for one year. But after those first few years, teaching for three years, 13 years, 30 years, it really doesn't make much difference. Fantastic. He absolutely deserved it. He's an inspirational teacher. To my son absolutely thinks so. He's shone in science, hence having Mr Scott as a teacher. Um, I know Mr Scott is very enthusiastic. And for my son, he, he's a very visual learner. Um, and lots of Mr Scott's lessons are very visual, with lots of experiments. And that's what makes it easy for my son to learn. <laughs> um, so he's a dream teacher. With that group, I think it's very, very important uh, as we go through and giving key concepts that they have a recognition, a memorable experience. So the flash of light was a way of for the students to appreciate that a chemical reaction was occurring. They, if they could think back to, oh, I saw that, there was a chemical reaction, there was a big wow, there was a big puff of flame, that it's a memorable so, so they can think back and use that. He knows the children very, very well and he plans the lessons to meet their individual needs. And the, the individual attention he gives those children, not just in terms of their resources and the things he asks them to do, but the way he talks to them one-to-one -to, -one to progress their learning further. And that, to me, is an outstanding teacher. I think being a teacher is, is like is having a particular set of skills that are unrelated to how well you can do in exams at university. So having some kind of presence, having some kind of uh, ability to, to attract and keep the attention and interact with individuals is a part of it, as much as knowledge of the subject. I can tell train when trainees walk through the door whether they're going to make it or not. Really? Yeah. There's Have you ever been wrong? No, not once. Um, I remember a few years ago when I was an um, assistant head in Birmingham, the guy walked through the door, he'd got so many qualifications, desperate to be a teacher, and I said to my colleagues then, he's not going to make it, and he, he didn't, he lasted about three weeks. I've learnt a lot of things from him, uh, science is a difficult subject to learn, and he's taught it very well. He engages with us when he's teaching. Having a good science teacher has made me like the subject a lot more than I would have, say, if I had an average or less than average teacher. I would have totally dismissed it if I didn't have a good teacher as Mr Scott. So we looked at uh, around 27,000 students who were, um, we knew exactly which teacher had, had taught them for which subject. So we could monitor the progress of those students when they were taught by different teachers. I think the most important finding was that the difference between being taught by an effective teacher and an ineffective teacher was really very large. Something like two GCSE grades per student um, by being taught by an effective teacher, very effective teacher, as opposed to an ineffective teacher. I think that governments need to think about this very carefully. I think there's very little that's more important than teacher quality in terms of improving schools and improving the education of children. So in a study of ours, we looked at the incentivisation of teachers and we compared teachers who were uh, eligible for a performance pay scheme with those who were not. And we found that actually th this worked quite well, that, t that students who were taught by teachers who were eligible for performance pay did better than students, similar students who were, not, uh, who were taught by teachers who were not eligible for performance pay. I think it 
it's a good idea as it may, may be an incentive to the bad teachers. Well, if I get better and engage more pupils, then I might get more money. That would drive a lot of people to actually do better. Um, I think there needs to be recognition, though, of the situation the teacher is in, who the students they're delivering it to. There, other, there is a, other implications which makes teaching either harder or easier. So I think that it's not as simple as just saying better teachers because it's hard to judge what is a good teacher and what is a bad teacher.